Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Question 8 on the 2018 paper um, for Leave Insert higher level was a, a bit of a mix, but predominantly calculus. The graph of the symmetric function f of x is equal to 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half x squared is shown below. A. Find the coordinates of A, the point where the graph intersects the y-axis. Give your answer in terms of pi. So find the coordinates of A where the point interacts, interse intersects the y-axis. Okay, so at the y-axis, your x-coordinate is always zero, okay? Any coordinate up along here, one, two, three, its coordinates are zero comma one, zero comma two, zero comma three. So that's what I mean by x is zero. The x-coordinate of any point on the y-axis is zero. Okay. So therefore, to find out where it intersects the y-axis, if you let x be zero in your function or your equation, you will find the corresponding y-value, which will be where it intersects the y-axis. So we know that f of x, which is y, is equal to 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half x squared. Uh, sub in zero for x. So that x is equal to zero. I have one over root two pi e to the minus a half zero squared. And that'll end up being e to the power of zero. And anything to the power of zero is one, not zero as you might think, but one. So I'm getting one over root two pi for that. And it said to leave your answer in terms of pi. So that's my y coordinate, okay? So where does it touch the y axis? Where does it cross the y axis? X comma y. Okay, so that looks like that point A they're calling it. Okay, so that's how you do that. And, and that theory works in reverse. If you have to find out where some, something intersects the x-axis, let that be a line, a function, a circle, it doesn't matter. At the x-axis, the y-coordinate is always zero. Okay, part B, the coordinates of B, which is here, is minus one, so minus one, one over two pi e. root 2 pi e. Find the area of the shaded rectangle in the diagram above. So area of a rectangle is length by width. Okay, uh, give your answer correct. Okay, so the length of that, well, if that's zero and that's minus one, and this is symmetrical, so B is a reflection of, of C or C is a reflection of B, that means that that must be plus one. So I would say that the length of my rectangle is two, minus one to one. And then the height is, well, it's, it's how high we came up on the y-axis. So it's one over square root of two pi e. And if I put that into my calculator, give your answer correct to de three decimal places. So we are giving this one as a decimal root 2, use the pi symbol on your calculator, use the e symbol on your calculator, uh, because then you won't have rounding errors. So I'm getting 0 0.4839 for that, three decimal places, 0 0.484. I don't know what units it is, so units squared. Okay, your pi button is down the bottom behind the by 10x. And on the, the class with whiz calculator, the E button is on the same on the same button. It's just um, in red. So you would have to hit the uh, alpha button and it's the same on the other Casio. OK. So that's part A and part B. Part C then was when we started to move into calculus. Um, Use calculus to show that f of x is decreasing at c. Okay, 
So the theory here is if a function is decreasing, in other words, it's going down, then its slope is zero. Okay, so using calculus, calculus is slope, okay, it is the rate of change. Um, so if, if I, um, if I differentiate it, I will have an equation for slope. If I concentrate on that point C, um, which is where X is one, uh, I sub that in, that X value, then I will get a slope at that particular point. So I'll get the slope of the tiny bit of that curve just at that point. Okay, so my function was F of X is equal to one over two pi e to the minus a half x squared. Ooh, okay. Right. So f of x is equal to one over root two pi. Okay, so that's a constant. That doesn't bother me too, too much. I'm differentiating with respect to x, okay? So there's no x value in that. That's just a number, albeit a strange looking number. It is just a number. Okay, so that doesn't bother me. That's the same as 2x, for example. It's just a constant. Now, e is a function, and it's got an x in the power. Okay, so this is a chain because there's a function in x inside the e function. Okay, so I'm going to let u equal to minus a half x squared so that I can differentiate that inner function just off here to the side. So take down the power reduce the power by one. So minus a half by two is minus one. So I'm getting minus X for that. Okay. Um, so F dash of X then is equal to, um, I just carry along my one over root two pi, just like I did the constant that was here. I just carried it down with me. My E function, E to the power of anything, uh, differentiates to e to the power of anything. Okay, where am I getting that? Here, okay. So I, I e, e to a power differentiates to e to a power. Okay, and I'm just extending that to a harder version where e to a power differentiates to e to a power. The difference here being I have to multiply it by the inner function, the power differentiated, because that's a function in its own right. So it's chained together. So I'm going to multiply it by the minus X that I got over here. Okay, so um, we could move it around. We could write it any way we want. We could go uh, minus one over root two pi X e to the minus a half of x squared, or we could leave it like that. So if, if, if it bothers you, leave it like that. And I say leave it like that for this one, because we have to sub in anyway, x being equal to one, because we need to find the slope at c. Okay, so therefore it's equal to one over root two pi e to the minus a half of one squared uh, multiplied by minus one. Okay, so you can see why I didn't bother doing too much um, tidying up of that because uh, I knew I was just going to put it into the calculator afterwards. Okay, the E function I'm going to use this time is over on the uh, very right. It's behind the LN button. So if you look at that one, it's got a flashing box beside the E, which allows you put in a power. Okay, it's different to the E button we used the last time. Uh, so it's e to the power of a half, really, uh, multiplied by minus one. And I'm getting minus 0 0.24197 for that. Okay, and, and that's grand and well, but the, the value means nothing to me. What means something to me in this question is the sign. Okay, because that minus sign tells me I have a negative slope. OK, which we do. We can see it's a negative slope. Um, but it tells me that when I look at the slope of that function at x is equal to 1, the original function was decreasing. OK, because f dash x refers to the original function, not to the slope. OK, so I, I hope that makes sense. It takes a few questions for that concept 
to seep into the brain. Um, but once you get it, it's, it's, an, it's an okay question. So to conclude, um, at x is equal to one, slope, which is f dash of x, is negative. Therefore, f of x, the original function, is decreasing at that point. Okay, and that point C for this one. Okay, so you could see this and in previous questions that we've done uh, that whole concept of functions increasing and decreasing and you having to prove it by calculus uh, comes up quite a bit. Okay. And then this one, we have seen points of inflection before. Um, so the graph of the symmetric function is that again, part D showed that the graph of f of x has a point of inflection at B. Okay, and if we write the theory up here, um, dy dx equals to zero to find our turning points. And our turning points are max, min and points of inflection, POI, okay? Then use d2y dx squared to find the nature of the turning point. Okay, d2y dx squared is less than zero if it's a max. It's greater than zero when it's a min it's equal to zero for a point of inflection. Okay, and you always test at the x values that you find for your turning points, but I'll be doing that one, this one. Okay, show that the graph of x has a, a point of inflection at b, okay? So the first thing I need to do is to let dy dx equal zero to find those turning points. Now we have dy dx, we found it in the last question. Um, and if you remember, it was, where am I? One over root two x e to the minus a half squared and then by the minus a half. Okay, so it's it's the original function. E to the minus a half x squared by minus x. Okay, and I might leave it like that rather than tidying it because I see I have a product rule anyway. There's a function in x, there's a function in x. I've already differentiated him, so I have that bit done. Um, so it's kind of set up already for your product rule. So your product rule over here, it's when two functions are multiplied by each other, and then you go u dv dx plus v du dx. So u dv dx plus v du dx. Okay, and this is d2y dx squared that we're finding here because we're differentiating the differentiated bit again. Okay, so let's work some of them out. Uh, u is equal to one over root two pi e to the minus a half x squared. V is equal to minus x. dv dx is equal to minus one. du dx is equal to, uh, it's equal to, it's equal to this, uh, one over root two pi e to the minus a half x squared by minus x. Okay, and you fill those four pieces of the puzzle into your product rule. So the first one I have here is u, which is one over root two pi e to the minus a half x squared. And I must multiply that by dv dx, which is minus one. So it's a bit like a crisscross. It's this one's by this one. Plus v times, which was minus x, by du dx, which is one over root two pi e to the minus a half x squared by minus x. This is nasty. Okay, so it's equal to minus one over two pi e to the minus a half x squared. I've multiplied the minus x by the minus x and I'm getting plus x squared by one over root two pi e to the minus a half x squared. Show that it has a point of inflection at B. Okay, I'm going to factor out that, that, that term because it appears in both and it might make our lives a little bit easier. So I'm going to do 
uh, x squared first minus one. I hope that's okay. I took the x squared from here and went back for the minus one here. Just, I don't, I, I don't like having a minus at the on the left in case I drop it. And all that's multiplied by e to the minus a half x. I forgot my constant. Let me go back. It's all multiplied by one over root two pi e to the minus a half x squared. Okay. Um, and at a point of inflection, we would like to let that equal to zero, okay? Or we would like to show that it is a point of inflection at B, okay? So at B, X is equal to minus one. Okay, so let's sub him in. And if it's okay with you, I'm just going to add in another sheet. I'm just going to take this piece so that I'm not squishing it up. Okay, so what I was going to do was sub in uh, x is equal to minus 1 into that piece. Okay, so that I got minus 1 squared minus 1 by 1 over root 2 pi e to the minus a half minus one squared. Okay, minus one squared will give you one, one minus one is zero. Okay, so I'm gonna get zero by this thing and I'm not even gonna work it out well minus. Um, and the reason I'm not too bothered about working it out because zero by anything is zero. Okay, so that's equal to zero. So d2y, dx squared is equal to zero at B, therefore point of inflection. Okay. And that was that question. So this theory you can see so, so important that you know this for the, the more difficult questions in calculus. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice. In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.